Now that we have discussed the management of chronic asthma in detail, we will now review acute asthma exacerbations. Our classic presentation in the case of an acute asthma exacerbation is a patient who is in acute distress with difficulty speaking complete sentences. They may also experience tachypnea, wheezing, diaphoresis, use of accessory muscles of respiration. As these patients' expiratory phase becomes longer, they may have a decrease in their inspiratory to expiratory ratio, also known as the IE ratio. Additionally, if these patients have paradoxical movement of their abdomen and diaphragm during inspiration, then this can be a sign of impending respiratory failure in the context of acute asthma exacerbations. Not surprisingly, in the case of an acute exacerbation, our asthmatic patients are going to have a decrease in their peak expiratory flow. Their ABG, or arterial blood gas, is going to show an elevated AA gradient, and we should also get a chest x-ray in these patients in order to rule out pneumothoraxes and other potential contributors to their symptoms. Going a bit deeper into the ABGs that we would expect to see in our asthmatic patients, it is super common for our asthmatic patients in general to have some level of hypoxemia and hypocarbia. This hypocarbia is due to an elevated respiratory rate that we see in our asthmatic patients when they are in acute distress. This ultimately leads to them blowing off more CO2, thus resulting in hypocarbia. Therefore, we would normally expect our patients with asthma to perhaps have a slightly lower level of CO2, especially if they are breathing sufficiently in order to ventilate and blow off the CO2. Therefore, if the PCO2 is normal or increased, then this is really a huge red flag that the patient has impending respiratory failure. This is because, as we mentioned above, normally the tachypnea, or faster respiratory rate in our asthmatics, should blow off that CO2, resulting in hypocarbia. However, as the patient's respiratory muscles fatigue, that PCO2 is going to rise, thus signifying muscular fatigue or a severe obstruction. And therefore, for these patients who have a normal or elevated CO2, or if that CO2 is continuing to rise as we monitor that ABG over time, then we really need to consider invasive measures, including intubation and mechanical ventilation in these patients. Additionally, there are several key medications that we use in our asthmatic patients who are having an acute exacerbation. These include inhaled beta-2 agonists. These are going to be of the short-acting variety, such as albuterol, and can be given via a nebulizer or a metered dose inhaler, or MDI, with a spacer. We also use ipratropium, corticosteroids, and in particular, in the context of an acute asthma exacerbation, we really need to give systemic steroids, namely IV methylprednisolone or oral prednisone, as in this case, inhaled corticosteroids is not going to be sufficient. However, as the patient's symptoms improve over time, then ideally, we would taper them down to the point where they are only using inhaled corticosteroids. But initially, in the case of a severe exacerbation, they are going to need systemic steroids, either given IV or PO. In the context of severe asthma exacerbations, we can also give our patients IV magnesium. We should also give our patients supplemental oxygen with a goal oxygen saturation of greater than 92%. And as we noted on the previous slide, keeping an eye on that patient's ABG, if the patient has a normal, a high, or a rising PCO2, then we really need to think about intubation and mechanical ventilation. There are several key complications that we need to be aware of when it comes to our asthmatic patients. This can include status asthmaticus, in which the patient has a lack of response to standard medications. Additionally, as we have now discussed multiple times, our asthmatic patients are at risk for going into acute respiratory failure. This is generally due to muscle fatigue or severe obstruction, which ultimately results in an inability for these patients to properly ventilate and blow off PCO2. Additionally, there are several pulmonary complications, which we ultimately rule out when we get that chest x-ray in our patients who are having an acute asthma exacerbation. These complications include pneumothorax, pneumomediastinum, as well as atelectasis.